Horizon, Episode 7, Retreat. Sergeant Lawrence. I'm bringing them out through the service corridor. This is ridiculous. They can't just attack her home. Someone should speak with them. Well, I can assure you they should not be one of us. Although, yes, the ones trying to break the windows should be charged with something. Lawrence, will they be safe going home? They'll be fine. And we have their flats under surveillance. Don't worry about that right now. Let's get to the porters. We're coming out in one. Check on pass. All right, everyone, please pay attention. When we go out these doors, there will be six porters. Two porters with guards will have their doors open. Nolira, follow me to the front porter. The back porter is for your family. You'll all be dropped off at your respective apartment buildings. Are you ready? No. Where are you taking Nolira? Will she be safe? You can't just spirit her off without giving us any information. We are taking her off station for now. The Order wants Nolira protected, but everyone knows her here. We'll take her to a safer location until... Well, until someone else tells me otherwise. We're here to help. Of course people know her here. This is her home. No, I want to know. She is my daughter and this is a difficult situation. Ah, ma, They I think it's best if I get away for a while. This is all a bit much anyways. Think of it like a vacation. I haven't had one of those in years. We have to go. The demonstration out front is growing, and we need to get you out before more people roll in. Check says we're clear out back for now. I love you, Nolly. I love you too, Connie. We're ready. Coming out. Lawrence, I know you said it before, but I'll need you to say it again. They'll be fine, right? They'll be fine. They'll be dropped off in no time. Their guards are experienced and capable, and you can still call them when we get where we're going. Yes, thanks. Thank you. Oh, hello, Clement. Hello, Doctor. Good to see you again. Nice to see you as well, although not under the most happy of circumstances. What? Don't you know I did this all just to see you again, Doctor? Aggressive slogans, vandalism, and all? <laughs> <laughs> if only it were so. <laughs> Things would be a lot simpler. Well, you'll get back to normal one day. The war is still fresh in people's minds. The good and the bad. <sighs> but where are we headed? May I know? Off station? On ten? We're, uh... Going to one of the presidential safe houses, at least for a while. We can't tell you where, but it's supposed to be nice. Never been there myself. Not yet, at least. Oh. Will Dr. Bond be there? Uh, no. No. The current stance is that Dr. Bone should not be seen with you, so as not to show... Not to show too much, uh... Well, he'll be at state dinners and public appearances and is really very busy. I understand. It's all politics. <clears throat> well, it should be nice then. And safe. And safe. Lawrence, you look tired. Is there something you're not telling me? There is. Tell me. I'll, uh, just let you talk. The protesters are not even a real issue. People throwing rocks and flying drones into my window feel like an issue. Frightening my family feels like an issue. It is. It is. I I'm sorry. The demonstration was just coincidence. What I mean is that we've been receiving and, uh, picking up some significantly credible threats on your life. Some of which are currently very pressing concerns. What about my parents? Or Constance? There have been a few threats. Then you can't just send them home, Lawrence. They could get hurt. What are the threats? Can I call them? 
Do people know where they live? How can we stop these... these lunatics? Turn around. Go to my parents' apartment. Clement. Clement! Uh, Alira, please, calm down. Sergeant Clement, some privacy, please. Oh, sorry. They will be fine. I wasn't lying. They are protected and watched. We won't let anything happen to them. The threats against them are less credible, less formed. Our main concern is you and getting you to somewhere safe. If anything happens to them... Believe me, given your record, you're the last person in this system I want coming after me. I'm sorry. That was... I'll call them when we get there. Check in. I'm just worried. Well, don't be worried. That's the whole reason we're here. <laughs> I can't believe you remembered Fio's favorite flower. It was good. Good of you to check it was me. Smart, too. Not that I wouldn't expect it from you. I'm glad I... I'm glad you remembered it right. If you hadn't, I may not have opened the door. And I'd have to tell Fio. <laughs> <laughs> As we have all heard, President Bowen has presented us with momentous news. The Exilearchy has submitted its formal surrender, and the armistice that was signed looks to be the beginning of a long peace. For the first time in seven years, we are no longer at war. For the first time in 21 years, we can return to our homes with the promise of a new era. While we can celebrate the end to our strife, our journey has been long and arduous. We have all lost something or someone, but never believe that it is only our losses that matter. The Exilearchy is more than just their order, as we are more than ours. Countless citizens were lost from stations, free planets, but unlike any time before in the history of humanity, we chose to make a hard decision that relied on the hearts and morality of others. In this, we erred. Yes, we have peace. But we move forward with the knowledge that this peace may be the wrong kind, for the wrong reasons. Regardless, the impossible was achieved. It was due to the work of our esteemed guest, and a true brilliance of the technocracy, Dr. Nolira Jiang Atwi. Dr. Jiang Atwi was there at the very beginning of the Exilarchy aggression. At the age of eight, she suffered horrendous injury during the very first terrorist attack on our stations. And to this day, she bears the scars and burden of those oh, events. What? Now, 21 years on. later, she stands before Wait. us, responsible for Allie? the of this war. Allie, turn it off! Really? Just before we get to the good part? Nolira, I was attempting to rouse you with playback of loud, beloved memories. Do you require assistance? Medical crew is currently unavailable to... That is not a beloved memory! I apologize. Without permission, I had to choose from the available public recordings. I selected the one with the most positive reaction and compliments. This one is filled with applause. Well, play something else. That one was never meant to be public. What would you like me to play? Anything. Just anything else. <laughs> that. I selected a random public audio file. Ali, what am I doing? Can't in. Can you turn a light on? I have tried. I have no active visual sensors in your current location. Do you see a flashing light? No. Should I? Either the light is flashing and you are blind, or the light is not flashing due to malfunction. For now, let's postulate malfunction. In you, or in the Bifrost. <sighs> the Bifrost? I generally don't refer to blindness as a malfunction, Ali. I will adjust accordingly. How long was I asleep? <sighs> you were asleep for approximately seven hours. Unless you are suffering from a concussion, I recommend further hours of rest given the extent of your injuries. Given how I feel, I agree. My stomach, abdomen, hurts. But I can move all my limbs, so I think I'm fully charged. Something positive, at least. But I'm nauseous, so hungry. I feel sick. Ali? Yes, Nalira. That access column was a terrible idea. Yes. 
<laughs> well, I enjoyed it. I think I hit my head. <sighs> Very hard. Yes. <sighs> Where's some food? And the life sign too. Give me an update. There should be vital foodstuffs in the medical bay across from this loader mechanical storage dock. The medical bay will also have the equipment you require to further address your injury. The life sign was last picked up on sensors several floors above you, near your last known position. It didn't follow me down. The hatch to the column closed behind you, unless the life sign is a member of maintenance crew or has knowledge of the access locations. Handles are built to be inconspicuous and unobtrusive. It is possible the life sign does not know there is a column nearby. This would hide your path. Well, I'll take that as good news for now. How do I get to the... Nalira. Uh, the medical bay alley? How? Please walk to the illuminated heart indicator. I, I can't see anything, Ali. Try something else. The public announcement system for the loader mechanical storage dock is operational. I will play a repetitive sound from the speakers nearest the door. Please, follow the sound to its source. in your way. No, no, just something gross. My sensors pick up very little optic information in the loader mechanical storage dock. Can you inform me of what you have found? Nothing. You still get embarrassed? <laughs> Who would have guessed you had the emotional range for it? Shut up. Do you hear something? What? Oh, sorry, Allie. What is wrong? The skin's coming off. The skin of my replacement arm, it's peeling off. It must have gotten caught in something during the fall. The suit arm got torn up as well, so now the skin is torn open. Does it hurt? Do you require assistance? Medical crew is currently unavailable to assist you. Well, no. The skin is grown and programmed to feel smaller things like pressure, touch sensation, or a paper cut, but the pain threshold cuts off in case of significant damage. Wait. I, I see something. Nalira, are you suffering? No, Ellie, there's a small light in my arm. A little blinking red light. I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> I can see. I'm not blind. It's just dark. Severely dark. Well, look at you. A little less human. It suits you, like peeling off a disguise. Are you able to continue toward the door? Yes. Yes. Oh. I think I broke something. It's a data pad. But that, that's a task for the next shift. I go back in a cryo in two days, so... I'm not gonna start something I can't finish. Can you turn off the drone for now, Ali? My next shift isn't for nine months. It seems like forever, but I'll only have another four shifts before I reach the atomic system. But that's plenty of work before the real job begins. I keep my own countdown, every shift, week, and day until we reach core. This is <laughs> the easy part. I know it's going to be a lot of work once we make it to orbit, but the payoff? Huh? No, I won't be there, sorry. Yes, back to cryo. The payoff once we reach core is exciting. We all signed up for the new worlds, Trenin and technocracy, working together to expand out into the universe. My family's ticket came up with UO second from core. It has been promised as a new Ontan, and we'll see. The immersion realities looked astonishing, but it'll be years until we make planet fall anyways. They said it would be about 10 years of life in orbit before we could start with on-planet habitation, so, I wonder how many shifts I'll have during that. <laughs> oh, but the terraforming for Protro is going to be astonishing. Some of the equipment they treat us for is difficult to grasp. We're erecting mountains, plowing rivers, building ecosystems from ice and dirt. <laughs> they think, they think, thankfully, Nua doesn't require such extensive work. The pictures we've already seen during the training sessions show that Nua is lush. The flora is green, but also very violet, dark purple, like wine. 
The agronomists got samples decades ago and they've already identified indigenous plants suitable for edible and textile crops, medicines and foods, completely new foods. I know it's small thinking with my stomach, but everything is new. Sky, continents, mountains, soon to be cities, foods and bugs. Eh. That's the other thing. We have to wake up in these shifts to take the inoculations and stay awake for the reaction periods. My arms are sore for days after those treatments. <sighs> brand new worlds, brand new set of problems. Uh, was that the end? Uh, I got to taste some of those foods. The ones from Protro, at least. We propagated them for the agronomy trials. One of them, it most closely resembles a legume, like a mung bean. It's packed with protein and vitamin D, but it, but it tastes like mangoes with a hint of lime. <sighs> I wanted to grow them in my garden once we made it planet side. Nalira, you are still suffering from physical damage and need to reach the medical bay. Should I resume the public announcement tones? Yes, please do, but can you open the dock door? Turn on the lights in the external hall if possible and open the door. I might be able to see if the lights out there are operational. Wait, is there atmosphere out there? Yes. Auxiliary lights in the dock hall are on. Now opening the dock doors. The door is not fully operational. Th that's fine. I, I can see an opening in the auxiliary lights. I don't need the whole thing open. Is it safe here? There, there's air. Gravity. There is currently breathable atmosphere here. Many vital functions are operational. Though many of my sensors are inoperable, due to the lack of sensory input, I cannot inform you of the safety level. That's good enough for now. I, I see the medical bay. Can you open the door? No. Please use the manual door controls. <laughs> Finally, food! Delira, you should address your wounds. Yes. I will. In a moment. <coughs> I didn't think it would look so bad. You were in <coughs> I remember. Do you require assistance? Medical crew is currently unavailable to assist you. <coughs> I know. Believe me, I remember. So what? I've already shot myself full of organic sealant and pain medication. What's next? May I make some recommendations? Of course. Take a time-release medication pain patch and place it on your neck. Clean away the blood and rinse the wound with the antiseptic solution. Once dry, apply one milliliter of nanogel to the front of the wound and another one milliliter to the back of the wound. Then apply the wound tape around your abdomen to secure the gel and support wound closure. That doesn't seem sufficient. Shouldn't I get into a vat for reconstitution? They are not currently operational. That would be too easy. Do you really think you deserve that? Of course. Pain patch first. Oh, how long until we reach the satellite range? Approximately 10 days. What if I were to go into cryo? I can wake up before we reach the satellite. I am unable to determine the current conditions of the available cryo chambers. If you would like to utilize a cryo chamber until you reach your intended destination or allotted time, you will be required to program and assess the chamber yourself. I could do that. The interfaces are programmed to be user-friendly. <laughs> What would you do about the life sign? Oh, you think it would find me in cryo? <sighs> Am I really supposed to keep running from this thing the whole time? Maybe I should just find a safe place, hold up there until the time comes. <sighs> I can feel the pain patch working. Whoa. The decision to avoid the life sign is your own. And I stand by the decision for now. 
We don't have enough information to make a better informed decision. Okay, the wound tape is itchy. I'm going to take a break and eat. I can't keep rushing like this. I also recommend further rest due to your current physical and mental state. Is there anything I can do to make you more comfortable? Do you have access to my video file labeled Sailing in Panren? I apologize. I cannot locate that file. Oh, all right. Uh, that's okay. It's mostly visuals. What about... I think it's called Miriam's Release Party or Miriam's Paper Release Celebration. Something like that. Do you have access to that one? Yes. Beginning playback. Dr. Xiang Antwi, I was wondering if I could get a moment of your time. Yes, hello. It's Bashar, right? Yes, Rifat Bashar. I was brought on to help with the final data collation under Dr. Wu, and I've requested to transfer with her over to your division. Good to hear. Miriam liked your work, and if you continue to improve, then we'll be happy to have you with us. Oh, I, I just turned on my recorder. I have some time, so don't rush. Just planning for the party. After this, I'm going to get Miriam to give a speech, and I want to get it on record. Oh, from what I know of Dr. Wu, she's not much of a public speaker. <laughs> she avoids it, but she's actually very articulate in public. Now, Rufet, what can I do for you? I was hoping I could set up a time to talk with you regarding my doctoral work. Since I am transferring divisions along with Dr. Wu, the university requires that I get a more senior division lead to sign on as my advisor. I see. The universities have such strange rules. Miriam is still perfectly qualified to be your advisor, but I understand it can push back your doctorate evaluation. I have a few students already, but I'll consider it. I'll speak with Miriam to see if you're a good fit, but I'll need you to send over your CV as well. Of course. I can send everything over later today. My dissertation work is cross-divisional, so this is a great opportunity to continue my work with Dr. Wu, and I've already done the provisional reading and studied your work with Dr. Serenetta. <laughs> it's been nice to meet you, Rafat Bashar. But now I'm going to get our Lady of the Hour to give a speech. Send over those documents, but after the party. Enjoy! <laughs> Hello, everyone. If I can direct your attention to the woman under the large red emperor maple. Thank you. Sorry to take you away from your enthralling discussions, but we're all here for a much more important reason than our own droll conversations. We're here to celebrate the talented and inspired work of our friend, co-worker and fellow, Dr. Miriam Wu. Now, if I can tear her away from her fine company, we'll see if we can get a few words out of her. Well, come on, Miriam. We only have until the champagne bottles run out. Thank you, Nolira, for making me have to stand in front of a crowd of people. A true friend. But thank you. And thank you all for coming. I'm happy to see that after years of hard work, I can still say I earned myself a day off and some champagne in the gardens. I mean, one day off every three years? That's not so bad. <laughs> While I am excited for the application of our work and to publish this paper after all these years, I'm looking forward to the next project. As you know, I've transferred from the Environmental Health Division to the Ecological Resource Division as of last month. And starting in two days, I will join my friend and colleague, Dr. Nolira Jiang Antui, and her team in their upcoming projects. So, while we are celebrating something that has come to pass, we should be excited for the effects our studies will have on the future and what will wait for us to discover, explore, and mold for our technocracy, for progress, and for science. What was all that about? You should be celebrating, Miriam. Your work is important, and your paper will help a lot of people. And the next one will help even more. That is what I'm excited about, and getting to work with you. I can't imagine how far we'll progress our field in just our lifetimes. Now, I was having a nice conversation with a particularly fetching mycologist before that speech, so if you'll excuse me... Go, before the sun cycle scares all of them back to their caves. <laughs> this is 
What's happening? Something has struck the Bifrost. My available sensors are... Nalira, please run. What? Where? This area will lose pressure very soon. Please return to the lower mechanical storage dock. I will close the storage dock door. We, we hit something. I saw the Bifrost had defenses for this. When fully operational, the Bifrost can withstand impacts from large projectiles and space debris, even when traveling at full speed. The Bifrost is not currently operating the I get it. Now close the dock doors. Where to? Back up the access column. I can't see. Please head to your left until you reach the wall. Follow the wall until you reach the cage for the access column. Proceed quickly. Understood. <laughs> Find it! Where, where is the green zone? The cage space is a vital function with auxiliary power and is designated as a green zone. <laughs> Warning, your area is depressurizing. Non-life-sustaining conditions imminent. <coughs> Open the hatch if you can, or close the access point in the dock. Please, conserve your life. Let the atmosphere in. Four, three, two, one. This was certainly be an interesting one. You are near the hatch. Warning. Life sign detected in a Jason Don't move. Last Horizon, Episode 7, Retreat. Written and created by K.A. Stats. Produced with sound design by Travis Vengroff. Mixed and mastered by Brandon Strader. Starring Siobhan Lumpston as Dr. Nolira Ek. Tanya Maloyevich as the AI. Also featuring the voices of Svetlana Gelmain, Sophie Yang, Ewan Chung, Jordan Cobb, Sam Yao, Rob Harrison, Max Lando, Raul Vega, Fiona Thrail, Daniel Demeron, Claudia Amenabar, and Christy Luce. The title theme for Vast Horizon, Adrift, was written by Brandon Boone. Translations were provided by Sophie Yang. This episode could not be possible without our friends at Himalaya. It would also not be possible without the support of our listeners through Patreon and now the support feature on Himalaya. To get access to bonus content like outtakes and bonus episodes, please support us on Himalaya or Patreon or by sharing this show with a friend or leaving a kind review. This production is copyrighted 2019 by Fool and Scholar Productions, and Vast Horizon is a trademark of Caitlin Stats. Thank you for listening.